What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to Statics. So let's solve this problem. We have this weird disk-looking thing, and it has four forces acting on it. And it tells us that it's in equilibrium and that all these forces like concur at zero. Our goal is to find the two unknown forces. So we're looking for force A. Oh, let's... Oh, I drew it backwards, huh? This is B. Okay, let me change that really quick. But we're looking for these two unknown forces, right? And we wouldn't have figured out there. So we have two unknowns. So I think this is B. Yeah, this is force B and this is A. So we're looking for force B and force A. There we go. So we want to find these two forces, right? And we know it's two forces. So we have two unknowns. And what we can do when we have two unknowns is we can write two equations. And those two equations are our equilibrium equations. Some of the forces Y is equal to zero and some of the forces in the X are equal to zero. So let me show you how we do that. So first we start with our free body diagram. Let's do those. So we start with this force going to the left, which is that two kilonewton force. And we other, also have another force going to the left, which is that force B. And force D is coming down at a 45 degree angle. And there we go, draw that 45. And then force A, which is four kilonewtons, is at a 60 degree angle. Now the reason I could simplify all these forces to acting at O is because it says that they're all concurrent to O. Which basically, we could kind of just extend that force to be happening at O. So this is our regular free body diagram. Now, what are those two equations I said? We said that some of the forces in the x is equal to zero, and some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. So with these two equations, we're going to be able to set up our system of equations to solve for our two unknowns using our two equations. And that's the rule. If you have two equations and two unknowns, you can solve. So which are we going to do first? Well, let's look at our unknowns. If we do some of the forces in the x, we have one force acting in the x, this one's acting in the x direction, this one's acting in the x direction, this one's acting in the x direction. So we have four forces acting in the x direction, uh, because this one's acting at a 45 degree angle, so technically part of it is acting in the x direction. But there's two unknowns, right? We can't solve with two unknowns in one equation, so we don't want to do some of the forces in the x first. If we do some of the forces in the y, what forces do we have? Well, we have this force and this force, but these two only act in the x direction, so we don't worry about them. So when we only have two, unknown, or two forces, one of them is known, the other is unknown, we can solve for one unknown with one equation, so let's do that first. Sum of the forces y is equal to zero. So what do we have? Only well, we a force d, which is pushing us downwards in the y direction. So force d is making us go down. So we need to subtract it. But also it's acting at a 45 degree angle, so we can't just add the whole thing to it. We need to add a portion of it. So let's go ahead and make our right triangle. This is trigonometry, right? Uh, so we have force D here, and we have 45 degree angle. So this part right here is force D in the Y direction, right? It's the Y component, and that's what we're looking for, is the corresponding component in the Y direction. So if we're looking for this side of the triangle, what are we gonna attach to it? Well, we're gonna attach sine. Now, we use sine because sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So if we want to find the opposite, which is this FD here, we're going to move the hypotenuse over. So I hypotenuse times sine of theta, that's equal to opposite. So first we're taking the hypotenuse, which is force D, and multiplying it by sine of 45 degrees, and that's going to give us that this component force DY that we're looking for. So we can do the same thing with this 4 kN force. This one's pushing us in the positive Y direction, so we're going to add 4 kN and then we're going to attach sine of 60 degrees because we're looking for this component here, right? And that's the opposite of the 60 degrees. So we're going to take the hypotenuse of 4 and multiply it by sine of 60. Now those are two forces acting in the y, so we'll set it equal to 0. Now we want to solve for this force d, so let's subtract this to the other side. And if we cancel out the negatives, we get force d sine of 45 is equal to 4 sine of 60. Now to get force D by itself, we can divide, and we can get that force D is equal to 4 times sine of 60 over sine of 45. Now if you do the math on this in your calculator, you're going to get that force B is equal to 4.90 kilohertz. And there we go, we found one of the forces. So let's do the next one. Let's find force B. To do that, we're going to use some of the forces in the x is equal to zero. That's the only other equation that we have left, so let's do it. So let's start, we have negative two, right? That two is pushing us to the left. 
Now we have that force D, which is pushing us to the right. If you look at it, that arrow is pointing more towards the right. So we can add force D. And this time, instead of asking a sine of 60, we're looking for the base of it, right? This is the X component of force D, so we want to attach cosine 45. So similarly related to sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we're looking for the adjacent side, which is this one here, adjacent to the 45, we multiply the hypotenuse over, so it's force D times cosine of 45. This force, uh, the four cosine, or the four kilonewtons, is also pushing to the right, just in the top right, so we're gonna add four cosine of 60 for that one. And then for force B, it's pushing us negative, so force B is gonna get subtracted and set that equal to zero. So we found a force D is already, it's 4.90, so I'm gonna plug that into our equation. 4.90 cosine. And then all we need to do is move the force B to the other side. So it's gonna be force B is equal to negative two plus 4.9 cosine of 45 plus four cosine of 60. Then all we need to do is do the math on that to get that force B that's equal to 3.46 kilonewtons. And there you go, that's how you solve this problem. So, very kind of simple math, but it's being able to set out that free body diagram that that's what we're solving. So, I appreciate the help on uh, watching this problem. Leave any questions you have in the comments, any recommendations, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.